So this is a, a change of pace, 120 design lessons, day 20. So today we'll cover the 3D printer. We went from the house, we got the corners up and built. Um, two corners on the house actually built. Uh, that, that feels good to actually see those things come up in, in real life. So we see the actual house in its built state uh, after all the work in the, in the workshop. Let's see. Um, you guys can see my screen? Yeah. So go to go to the standard zoom link. Um, so you can look at the links there in there. Once again, uh, in the design lesson started a doc for day 20. You can see it from my log or let's go into it into chat box. chat box to take a look at today's doc. Uh, let's take notes there. So it's now 3D printer genealogy material. talk about the overview of the printer. So this is what the actual printer looks like um, here. That's that's a copy of the D3D V2 Universal. That's Universal. It's a small three-axis system where you've got um, we'll talk about it. Well, so z-axis moves up and down currently I just have this stop so so it doesn't fall down once it starts going it does the thing so prints take off the, those last prints Y-axis uh, moves back and forth. X-axis is here, so it's a three-axis system. Just X, Y, Z, the simplest you can do, three axes. Uh, unlike the, the Pro, which has got two Y-axis and two Z-axis, so it's a total of five. Here's just three as the minimum. Now, and that's the basic, basic design of the, the printer. So you've got um, So how does this thing work? So you've got the controller, stepper motors, so three stepper motors, XYZ. There's another identical stepper motor on extruder. And the universal axis concept, which is a long axis, just 5 16 rods, and bearings inside the 3D printed piece. And that's it, that's, that's the universal axis concept. Now, you can expand this size quite a bit of the rods, and that's where you get to the one inch, or even the two inch for super heavy duty. Now, how, how do we do the, so the extruder is our design, it's like the simplest thing possible. Unique feature about it is uh, out of anything that you would see out there, it's got the shortest distance between the drive, drive wheel and actual nozzle. Like typically people make it too complicated. It's like, um, it's transparent. Like if you get a clog, you know, you release the spring, it opens up, pull out the string, you can see that you can see the filament. That's good because, I mean, that's the thing that's going to fail on you. Like, if you get a clog, you got to, like, open up the insides and mess with it. Here, it's very simple. Like, if there's a clog, then you can do that. I've, I've been running this one. Actually, this one, I've been printing parts, like, last month, 
not a single clog, not even a single failed print actually. This is pretty getting pretty robust. Um, you turn it on, it, it, it pokes. See, should we turn it on and see what, observe its behavior just, just, just to see how it functions. But you plug it in, you get a power light on the power supply and then, so print, you go, I want to show you the, the behavior, what happens when you start doing it, uh, start doing a print so that you can appreciate how this works because it's self-leveling. You, this probe here, probes on four points on the bed and gets the level so it knows exactly where it is height wise otherwise it doesn't know anything and then here the end stops there's end stops like this one here so when it goes to it it knows where it locates itself it actually triggered and I don't see a light should trigger and you should see a light come on which the, where the light is here you can't see it but it's that's how it knows the position of homes. It goes to the end stop here, it goes to the end stop here, and the Z Pro controls the Z height. Uh, it knows where it is on a Z height. Now the, the bed may not necessarily be level. I mean, it could be twisted. And you see, you see this axis, it's, it's tilted down. It doesn't matter. Because the, what it means is that when you do the probing, it, will, it remembers that and then it adjusts for that. So you can have a visible angle off like this. Here you can see it, but even if you can't see it, if you have a, if you're printing with, right now we're using 1.2 millimeter nozzles, 0.4 layer heights, I mean, it, you get a, this tiny offset that it's wrong, you're not gonna hit the first layer and it's gonna fail. So you gotta be within a millimeter, sub-millimeter accuracy in the first layer. And that's what this probe does by probing. So let's let's show an example of print from SD card. So there's an SD card here. We put in uh, put in our prints there. Uh, Cura, Lulzbot Cura. I recommend you can use Cura regular Cura, but I don't recommend it, and I don't want to support it because it's too complicated. It's got too many things in there for a novice. It's absolutely not needed. Lulzbot Cura has the basics. It's Pretty straightforward transparent. Have you used regular Cura versus uh, regular? Regular? Yeah, I don't like it. Do you like it? It's okay. It's a lot of things here. Too many things. Too many so settings. too many settings, and if you miss one setting, it's not going to print. So, so keep it simple, especially when you're doing it first time. So, print from SD. Uh, whatever, like uh, first file there. So what it does right now, you can see the. That's the light. It's a, it's a halogen light bulb. Two of them. And it's fast. It's like, it's a 30. And and the extruder here also went on at the same time. It's at like 30 as well. But the this bed will turn off pretty quickly because it's and then it's going to wait for the heater here. Typically it's the other way around. You're waiting for the bed to heat up. But this is radiant heat, so it travels immediately into the print surface. It's not like uh, typically resistive heating where you have to hit, go through material, like solid material. But here it's uh, radiant heat is kind of like immediate. It's just faster. So that's really cool. I don't know anybody that does that. That <laughs> uses uh, halogen heaters. You know, the tr so it's already at temperature. It's 60. It's already 60. See, it's hot. Uh, and now we're waiting for the extruder. And it's, we're at 120. <coughs> on the extruder and the bed is already at like 70. Um, now there's a trick to this, those are two, 120 volt bulbs in series on a 120 volt system. What that means is that we're using quarter the power so that they're going to last. Like if you, if you just did a halogen in 120 and it's a 120 halogen, it might burn out. The, the, the stress point on like a light, incandescent light is when you turn it on, it gets all hot really fast. So the trick here, and that's what I was testing for, like, are these things gonna burn out in a second? I think if you ran them at 120 on a single bulb, which means 120 volts for a 120 bulb, it may burn out much faster, but so far it's like, it's been a month of pretty much on, on and off, because it cycles many times during a print. And that's still safe, uh, it hasn't gone out yet. I don't expect it to, it should, this should last thousands of hours, uh, as far as the heater element. Itself. The bulbs themselves. 
regular dollar halogen bulbs. Yeah. Otherwise, you're paying like 20 bucks for a heater pad. Yeah. So it's another cool thing. Now the thing is about that is we're running at 120, so we got a GFCI element here, so that you don't get shocked. Um, so 120, for example, those wires there are 120. Um, so look at the behavior. So it homes, it homes on this. Now it's going to probe the bed with this probe, and you'll see that light turn on when it hits the bed. And now my little lock, I just use this lock. We should probably put like springs in here so it doesn't hold on. For, for now, we've just got this, this little lock, which I'm using like one of these parts as a lock. So it touches it. Now it goes probe slowly. It goes to the so it's going to hit four points. Second point. <laughs> Where's the probe? Is it? It's this thing. It's the... Oh, okay. sensor. That's just a probe. It's what? an inductive sensor that senses metal. Oh. Now it starts printing. So now it, it senses where it is, and now you're printing. And that's it. So that, that's how it kind of looks. Um, oh, well, we don't have filament, but we got this little bit of filament left here. Uh, so it's going to get sucked in. And it's starting to print, and you see it's it's right on the first layer. I mean, that's just that's pretty cool. Like, um, yeah, and it hits it. So I never had to adjust it a single time after I got it in. This, this is good. It's good. robust. Um, so that's that. So what do we do here? What are the things we're cutting? This rod, six inches. Six inches. These rods, 12 inch. This rod, 12 inch. Now, the bed rods actually, let's make it so if you see the length of it, it's a little longer than 12, isn't it? So, how long do we make it? The rods are all the way, yeah, they're long. They're, um, they're like 14 and a half. So we should do 14 and a half, or 14, 14 to keep it, 14 is fine. Um, so I'm going to stop that before it, uh, there's the reset switch on here, so it just quits, because I, I want to keep that uh, filament from going all the way down in the hole. Um, but actually, like now, if, wherever I got it ended up with the filament, it got it sucked in, you just put the new one in and just push it through. But you got to be at temperature because once it cools off, it's solid. You can't press it through. Um, anyway, that started a first print. 14 inches. So let's. Um, how do you do it? One person cut rods, maybe. There's a few cutting parts. So uh, let's go to. First of all, okay, on my screen. If you want to take a look at the screen, what page do you go to to find out the latest version? It's called D3D Genealogy. And there's like, we've built dozens, every single time you improve something. So we're now at, ver this is actually called D3D Universal V21.06, which means that this was started in June. Uh, now, uh, it's this is not 28106, uh, this is V2. So what's new in V3? In V3, um, I didn't make that explicit in the description there, which should be made explicit, and that is integrated. All right, the deal is, here's a couple of things. First, the number one deal is you can print another one of these with this. How? Well, you notice the bottom piece is pretty big. This whole piece is, all, is about 12 inches. So, broke it and cracked it in half. You break it in half. Print it in two pieces. And also, this piece here, just put feet on that and put feet on this piece so you can attach it directly to the, the board. So there's a cut, cut list, that's a two by 12, with contact paper, black contact paper. So, what do we do? 14 inch, two by four is our cut list. Um, so cut list, let's say 14 inch of 2 by 12. 
who wants to do that? So, so we know how to cut already, so. Uh, so the board here is too short. This is like 12 inch now. We want to extend it to here so we can mount this piece. It's, it has its own feet and it's 15. Uh, 15. So let's make 15. 15 the number, let's say for the rods. So, so rods are 15, two of the 15 inch and four of 12 inch. And then one of six inch. And then there's more. One, six inch. And what about here? The bed is riding on these rods too. So there's two rods on the bed. And for reference, that is eight inches. Two rods that are eight inches. Like that you said, they were longer, like 14. Well, these are, these are 15. But these ones here, that's what the bed rides on. Those are seven or eight. Let's see what would suffice. It's seven and a half. Just call it eight. Two of the eight inch. Now this is uh, this is in the building material. So if you go to the Okay, let's say today's working dock here. Okay, let's do the link to the 3D printer master file. So there's a development board for this. So on the genealogy page, if you click on the latest one, it's already got this all seated. And what happens there is I bring forward everything that applies from before. Um, so for example, for the CAD, there's new parts because we broke down the base into two parts or three parts. So 3D printer dev board is there. So what are, so how does that look there? So you see like instead of the one big base thing, main base assembly, well, broken into two pieces part one and oh, it's hiding. so th this is what I'm saying like this piece here that sits that's this piece with its own feet so basically like make this whole thing independent therefore also if you have skewness like for example if, if this thing this can skew well if you got any skewness issues you can just keep one screw attached and you know move it at a slight angle to make it at the right angle so it's an adjustment piece uh, okay cut list what else is in the cut list um so you'll see here that's just conduit just use conduit six inches so that you have a spacer between this under the conduit is but is a carbon fiber blanket it's an insulator both electrical and heat so for the cut list you need two pieces of emt conduit which are six inches so two pieces emt one half inch conduit that's the metal conduit for they run electrical in that um six inch long what else do we need so we've got this this top plate, we got that already from the store from Metal by the Foot, these six inch square pieces. This is one eighth inch and this is six sixteen. But in the bottom one, there's a screw. And then on to the top one, there's a welded nut that you screw the screw into. So for this bottom piece, which is sixteen, drill a quarter inch hole. See that, that bolt at the bottom? There's a bolt through it holding the top piece, because how do you hold this thing on? Um, you, you take a, an Allen, it's an Allen bolt. It's the same bolt as we use, use here, like this same bolt. You screw it in from the bottom and then there's a welded nut. It's an Allen gated nut. Um, okay, so there's, so cut list is a drill, drill hole in the center of the 16th inch plate. 
in center on the back. So how do you do that? You draw two lines across, and the center marks the center. The, the cross point marks the center. Drill hole in center of 1 16th inch plate. Uh, for the top plate, that, that needs a little weld on. After you do all the rods, grind them with a grinder. The edges are going to be sharp, so just make them do a little bevel on it so yeah, they're not sharp. Right after the, how do you cut the rods? Abrasive metal cut off. That's what we do. Um, yeah, that's that. What else do we need to cut? We talked about 14 inch of 2 by 12. We'll maybe make it just 15 or see it. Make it 14. Make it 15. Make it 15 inches of 2 by 12. That's the base. What else do we need to cut? Let me look in my notebook. If we missed anything. What else? What else? We got a bunch of rods basically is, is the main thing. Mm. That's it. So then the next step was, uh, so we got all the printed parts. Um, I take the car up there to get the printed parts, but what we do is, like you see these ones that just came off, that's the extruded pieces. I think we should uh, start with, well, we can do like, do like a simple thing like the, the this Y axis here, the bed axis. That's, that's like comprehensive axis. You'll see how the bearings go. There's bearings that go inside these pieces. There's a belt that goes through it. There's a way to attach the belt. There's a little idler in this piece here. And then there's the stepper motor on this piece. So we could do those. Um, we're not going to need... Um, so things like... All we do is take screws and attach these to the base. Like like just one and a quarter inch black screws. Because they have... Um, they already have these little feet. Just screw that down to the platform. So... Um, then there's electronics, and there's uploading the code, which is D3D. The same code as this applies to Universal 3 has the same code as V2, so we can upload the same code. Or if someone wants to change the, the Marlin, you have to change. The, here it says D3 Universal V20.04. So in the code that we upload in the Marlin, we can change that. That's the only change we have to make to the code updated to 20.06. Uh, beyond that, all the settings are are good. Uh, so cutting first, then the controller is effectively so you got your control screen. There's the Arduino Mega thing here, power supply, GFCI with plug, and then there's a relay that switches on the bed because. Uh, your Arduino cannot handle 120 volts, it just gives a signal to this relay and then uh, it activates the bed, that's 120 volts. Everything else is 24 volts here. Um, yeah. So we can go about that. Uh, questions, what do we do? So let's cut all the parts and uh, yeah questions on how to proceed the the document if you want to know the documentation for so once again in the development template that board like how do you identify parts that's an important part but if you go to the BOM so first of all you've got the CAD images of all the all the parts uh, you can identify bed mount carriage you know Axis, motor side, idler side, all these pieces. Um, I would say the extruder is the most complicated part to, to build because um, it's got small parts on it. It's a we've got a bunch of small parts. It's got multiple parts. It's 
just kind of a little intricate. And you have to align the drive cog to the, so it's exactly over the hole, the little filament hole. So there's alignment there. But other than that, it's like, there's screw locations. There's just little play as far as how, how far you put on the drive, drive gear. That's like the only, perhaps the only point of accuracy you really have to pay attention to. It has to be exactly over the hole, otherwise it will just jam. That's all. And the BOM is a good place to look at. So if you go to the uh, BOM, the, the spreadsheet, you can take a look at the actual links to the store parts. So if you want to see it, what is that, frame and axes, uh, 3D printed parts, socket screw. So you have a link to every single thing so you can take a look at, okay, what is that? That didn't work. Um, controller, end stops. Click through all these things, but it's if you study this, like you'll see all the parts um, that are in there, and that's that's like a whole whole day to understand this. It's a lesson on there's um, there's a total of 82 parts, 82 unique parts that I'm counting here about, which is still very low because, for example, by comparison. Uh, I looked at the open source Lulzbot TAS and it had 1,400 parts in it. So 82 is less than 1,400, which is, in terms of business complexity and logistics, 10x. More than 10x. Um, but yeah, just very simple design. I'm trying to reuse a lot, a lot of parts as much as possible. Like the bolts we use throughout, like even like to hold the sensor, you know, we use the same bolt. In the back here, just just part redundancy. Uh, basically, using M M6 bolts and uh, M3 bolts. That's pretty much all, all we ever all we ever use here. Uh, M3 and M M6. Just paying attention to okay when we're putting this together, what's a robust bolt size? Well, M6 is quite kind of robust. It's a quarter inch, um, and go from there. And just some M3s, like the M3s you need because they're these tiny bolts that go into the extruder. Can't do M6 there. And you zip ties to arrange all the wires. Yeah, so that's the basic thing. You can get into the details of every single part in the BOM. And you can look at the CAD in terms of every single part that's in it. We do have CAD. Okay, like if we open up the CAD for. Um, I think the last version has its complete CAD. Well, let's see, V2, like right there, that's the assembly there. We don't have V3 with the separated parts. How would you get to V3? You would basically take the existing V2, take out the base, and insert the two-piece or three-piece base. And the only other change I'll point out, like for example here, which makes the next iteration simpler. So this piece here, we're, this was a separate Z-axis that, that was attached to the base through four bolts, like two here and two there. We just said, okay, just put the, the motor piece right on the base, that's it. Uh, reduce those two parts to one so that you don't, first of all, like you don't have any play in that because it's one piece now. And then you just stick the rods in there. Uh, if you take a look at the overall CAD for the machine. This is what we have right now. Well, no, that's just, I don't know where it is. We have a like more or less complete, but not, that's just the base and electronics. That's, that doesn't have it. If we go to the last version, uh, hopefully the, let's see. Uh, the last Universal V2 2007 and a CAD. We should have the. Is that updated base? We might not even have the whole model, but all the pieces are there, so we have to put them into the finished machine. Let's see the V2 assembly here. How far is that? 
Was that the same one? same one so we need to in order to compose the entire cab we just have to put in all the parts yeah so it's not assembled this is all the individual parts are there but the overall assembly is not right now we have the overall extruder assembly um, yeah that's fully catted up you can look at that in detail because uh, that's like we consider this as a separate module that's that goes on the pro it goes on all the printers uh, starting with the universal to the pro same same design. Okay, any questions on what to do? We'll, we'll go to the shop and cut the parts and then come back here and start cleaning off the pretty printed parts. Like they're all cosmetically impure but they're they're very strong other than that. So basically we'll take a knife and just clean off all the excess chaff from the parts. Questions? Here. So in the workshop we want to do the, the cutting, the rough cutting, but I think we should build here. So each person, what we should do is grab all those gray boxes and put all each person's parts in one of those. So maybe grab one as we go out there so each of us gets a set of rods and everything else. I'll build one. Uh, Ken, you'll also build one. So there's two, four, six, seven, seven printers. Parts enough for seven. So if we divide the tasks up into cutting, grinding parts, we got to make seven sets. And the best would be like, once we come back here, let's just do it together. Like I'll, I'll build it, you guys can follow and just do that way. There's a comprehensive, it's like a hundred page build guide. It's got every step in there for V2, which means you, you substitute the parts and you just broke the base down into the three parts. But everything else is the same. Everything other than the three-piece space is identical. So that that guide, if you want to boot it up, load it up, that would be if you go to the working doc, go to the dev board, and do the build instructions. Uh, Instructions are read there, so what we want to do is I'll redirect it to 2104, I believe. Oh, 2007. Mm -hmm. I see. So here we have 2007 build instructions. Those are the ones that are the latest. But what we should do, since this is 2007 with a one piece base, we should just copy this one. Don't redirect. I'll open this one up and make a whole copy and then we can add the little changes into this. So I'm going to do file, make a copy, entire one. So this is D3D V21.06, build instructions. So mostly the same except for the few pages on a base. So I'm going to put that, yeah, 2106, no redirect. You don't want to do that, you want to go straight to the actual document new document. And then just embed it. <clears throat> Publish. Embed.
So we can edit this and call this 21.06. So change that. 21.06 and V3. So this is our starting point. Uh, I mean, you can go through the, the comprehensive deal here. Tools, identify the printed parts. Um, it's like the layout of how that looks. Oh yeah, so none of this thing. This is now the other changes that uh, that's a new thing. For, so besides the one piece base is the nichrome. Nichrome then taking nichrome wire, which is hot, hot i.e. uninsulated. So you have to put it in the sleeve. That was hard. That's why we went to this. We can build some of those. Uh, they're hard to build. They're an electrical hazard if you don't get the insulation around it. And they tend to burn out. This is much safer, easier to build, and quicker to build. So that's a that's a major upgrade. Is those heater elements formerly were pretty painful to do, and that's the build steps in the, in the design, the build guide. That shows what we were doing before. Now we got to replace that with just the halogen heater. So before we used to make these insulated wire sets. Uh, but other than that, yeah, same. How you attach the, this is important. How you attach the, the drive sprocket. You want to make sure you do it tight when it's correct. I would actually put a little bit of crazy glue, like right on the top. Like over time, that's the only thing that it's gonna fail on you. It's like all the printers, pretty much. Like after some time, the the screws would get loose. So either use Loctite or just a little dab, just a tiny drop of crazy glue on a shaft. <laughs> I would just do that because right there, I just put a little drop of crazy glue right there and that thing is not going to loosen up on you. I've seen the screws loosen up over time, even though they were pretty tight up front. They tend to get loose because it's vibrating all the time. It's making these little steps all the time steps that you can't really see, like you'll see it if it's moving very slowly, you see that it's actually not continuous, but it's little steps. That's a vibration at every, you know, thousands, millions of vibrations for every print. And that tends to get things loose. Um, yeah, so that's, that's like the biggest thing on getting this thing to work, is making sure this part here, the pulley is at the right height on the shaft, and that it's tight. And that will save you a lot of headaches later on. Uh, what else? Bearings inside the carriage. Um, rods. If the if the bearings are too loose, put a little bit of thread tape on them. Uh, tape, thread tape. It's uh, electrical tape, just to get them tighter. Um, belts. Belts have these little ends on them. details and here's the starting electrical oh, that's all wired up it's all the electrical wiring in detail more electrical more electrical plug so that's the GFCI the, the safety there and that's on the right hand side is the solid state relay that turns on the 120 volt heaters the power supply is this thing and that's your controller board LCD screen, integration, mounting the heat bed, mount the end stops, and there you go. So what's that? So cut list. <clears throat> so what are the rod lengths? That's that's the main thing to cut it right. Rod lengths. Fifteen inch, five inch, six inches. And two eight inches, <clears throat> eight inches for these these two here. The ones that are gliding are three axes. This one here 
And that's actually got bearings inside this assembly so it can rotate freely so the spool goes on it. This one here and the bed rods, they don't have to be like glide quality, they can be rough. Um, but we've got stainless steel, so this, these rods here are not stainless steel, they're what's called 2014 L steel, which is easy to machine, but it rusts, it tends to rust. So I've got stainless, so that more in tune with lifetime design. I mean, when you're using it, it'll never rust on you, but once you, if you have it sitting and you got humidity, these rods will rust on you after some time. So, like you see in the shop, there's boxes or you know, boxes of rods that are rusted, and you just take sandpaper and take the rust off. But the stainless would be more more valuable, like never rusts. So that's cool. Uh, retains its value for a longer time. So we got the stainless, we'll cut the stainless rods. We should probably do them like if we're doing seven sets, take a bundle of seven and cut all at the same time. There's one abrasive cutoff saw, which has got markers. It's got markers for lengths, like it's got kind of like a jig for lengths, so you can use that one. Uh, there's one of them there. All right. So roll division, who's doing what? We go in there, who's cutting what? Who wants to cut the wood? All the scraps on the, on the floor there, we could use those. Those are good. Then I, I've got contact paper and we make it look like this. Or spray painted. I mean, I think the contact paper looks neat. Um, it's just a base. It's a cosmetic thing. You can keep it as wood if you want to. And shine it up. <laughs> Sand it if you want to. But yeah, this, this easy way is to use contact paper and make this black base. All right, cutlass. Who, who takes what? <clears throat> so we need seven of the two by twelves. Yeah. Just seven. Each, uh, yep. Seven 2x12s. Well, actually, we need one for Matt. Eight. eight. We need eight sets. One person is not here. In fact, uh, so our guy Chris is also arriving, too. We should make nine for him because he's going to need one, too. Okay. We're doing it right now. So just, yeah, leave, nine. Leave the parts for later. So yeah, two sets. So one we ship to Matt immediately. And Chris should be arriving on the 25th, which is like tomorrow. So, Chris from Peru. Oh, Brian? What about Brian? He's not showing up these days. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, we should. Ten. Ten. Um, I mean... Okay. Um... Oh, I can take the You don't want to do one at all, or, like? Um, no. Okay. Because the 3D printer we can use to prototype things, like, for example, when we build the torch table and other things. Uh, it, so, you, what happens when we're doing that kind of stuff? You're not doing it, like printing parts for other things? Um, there's a compelling case for that, but I mean, it's up to you. It is applicable in the sense that, um, so, for, I mean, what's the reality of this? So you print one at a time, right? But say you got a CNC torch table where each piece is like six inch by six inch by like one and a half inch. You know, that's a six hour print or whatever. Uh, or longer depending on the infill. Like if it's full infill, like if you don't make it super strong, that's gonna be like uh, that's gonna be like a spool of filament there. That's that's like a 24 hour print. So what that means is that when we're doing the torch table, which has got those big parts, if we've got eight printers or ten, uh, each each axis is three pieces. So at one time you're making enough for three axes and it's got five axes total. So basically in two days we print the parts, which is realistic, as opposed to we got to spend 10 days or 20 days, well, times 10. So that's, that's how it works. Printers are not fast. Like either you have like a larger printer with a bunch of multiple heads, like you can put like nine of these. There's no reason why you can't put like nine of these on a single printer. So you got a fast production printer like that. And that's what we, we want to do uh, uh, definitely in uh, in a summer X time when we're building larger printers, it's gonna have multiple heads. So you can simply print faster or think about printing like nine two by fours 
out of plastic at the same time. But with these individual ones, we can simulate that by a swarm. So that's how that applies to the, for example, the CNC torch table, where like on a day time scale, we've got the parts as opposed to waiting a week for the parts. So that, that's how it's relevant on that. Yeah. Um, you can kind of modify the, the printer too, like if, I mean, if you're really familiar with it, you can turn it into like maybe an engraver or, or some oh, sure. other things. I mean, we've got then. right here, this other slot, this is also a plotter already. So you put in a pen here right. and you run G code that's for plotting. So for example, just to show you examples of what we have done already, so D3D plotter. Yeah, I mean, it's a multiple tool head. You can do circuits. We've done a little bit of drilling of circuit holes. So let's see, D3D pen plotter OSC. D3D universal plotter. If you go to that, look at that. So there you go. Uh, people drawing things out right, right. Uh, like this. That's all it is. It's just a pen and, and a... Actually, there's there should be a... Uh, look at Melanie Log, actually, she's been working on that. This is just a remote collaborator. So stuff like that. Um, let's see, any... Like this. Well, that's not... That's just the... It's not a real print. Plotter, let's see, plotter log. We've got some nice pictures for what it can do right now, plotter log, I believe. Like, so that's done with the print using pointillism. This is using squiggles. Um, you know, you can do addresses. This is points. Yeah, so we've got, you know, there's different ways to do it. You can do, um, these are just squiggles. Pointillism is quite nice. I mean, you can, this is not well refined. This is like, you can keep working at this and, and refine this to pretty cool printing uh, we just did a little bit of that work but yeah that's that's doable right now let's see what about d3d cnc circuit mill well no no most, most of the printers are just marketed as printers not even like oh well, it's this universal tool you can just throw this other head on and do this with the tool yeah yeah i mean it's the xyz axis is a uni universal thing um See, like KiCad 101, we when we did this, we actually uh, we did the holes. In one of the steam camps, we did the uh, hole drilling for the circuits. Um, let's see. I think 2019. videos of some of the builds here. No. If you go to our YouTube, we show some nice, uh, let's see, maybe on our channel, look at uh, D3D Universal Circuit Mill. Selling them for 500 bucks on the website. Um, let's see, Folger Log. Folger did this. somewhere there but we did um, like for example to do a 
in order to do like a little circuit with an Arduino, because you can get, so for this Arduino that we use here, our circuit mill is not good enough to do it because it's got, this is like very tiny, but the regular Arduino, like the Arduino Uno, you can take on this thing, you can take a circuit board and you can do, do the holes that you drop in that 328P microcontroller chip. And then you can mill the paths between it to do a simple Arduino. So in the tech recursion scenario where you're actually using the machines to build further machines, you can build we actually have very good instructionals on our DIY Arduino where you have just the chip and a minimal system component. It's only like five other components on a simple circuit board that you can then mill with uh, this this thing right here. So, uh, and well, just to show, I, I remember this. This was in um, New Zealand Steam Camp, actually. Uh, we have some pictures of the milling New Zealand. Yeah, this thing here, look at some of the stuff, like, where's the milling part? There. So you can do something like this. This is actually just a circuit holes. You can do a pattern like this, where you actually insert the chip, the 328P. It's this long microcontroller chip. and you can do, I mean the lines there are like a tenth of an inch, so it's easy for a device like this to do it. But you have to go super slow. I mean, this, I mean, it's got a lot of wobble. Like, if you put, if you make these rods thicker, like half inch or one inch, then yeah, you can do that pretty robustly, uh, this kind of stuff. But with these tiny rods, I mean, you know, you can shake it around and it moves around. And when you're drilling into the material, there's forces. But for a 3D printer, there are no forces, it's just extrusion, so that's fine for that. Right. Once you go to higher forces, this is too small. Um, but we also did do the pro-based uh, D3D circuit mill. So this is the official, the actual one that's well supported. Um, so the one with the two Z axes, like this, that, well, so that's that's the thing with the, uh, you're just holding, you're using multiple redundant axes here. So you got two Y axes and two Z axes, two X axes, so it's a six axis system. Um, and then this is the kind of stuff, you can mill precise stuff with that. Like, possibly, yeah, I mean, look at that. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. We can actually make one of those stepper drivers chips. That's what we actually did there. We made one of those uh, stepper driver chips with that in KiCad. So, yeah, anyway, uh, multiple tool heads is cool. Like a laser is a simple low-hanging fruit that's also forceless. You can get like 15 watt lasers. They can cut cardboard, like tiny little laser heads. Yeah. We have some of those so we can work with later. Um, and it gets into, you gotta pay attention to safety there because 10 or 15 watts, that's yeah. enough to blind yeah. you and stuff. Or it's something different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you want to put an enclosure around that. All right. That's what we got on this. So cutlass, 15 inch for the wood, for the rods. Um, we can get out a few, a couple of the abrasive cutoff saws and you can just mark, mark the things. I would just suggest take a bundle of nine and cut them all at the same time. That works. So you just cut it, cut it that way. Now I can show that. Maybe we start with that. Got to cut the EMT. Got to drill the hole in the center. We can just take the drills, uh, our drills, and the the quarter-inch bit. You can just drill it by hand into a piece of wood, but you got to hold it. 
It's the safest. I would I, don't use the mag drill. That's that's actually a little dangerous. Like you can cut, you can drill through 16th inch plate relatively easily with a half a, with a quarter inch bit. Like for this bottom plate that's got the hole at the bottom, um, that you can just do by hand. So drill, cut EMT, cut rod, and cut wood. So maybe take a picture of that. And let's get in there. Simple enough. But yeah, I mean, complexity here, this is more complex than the walls we're building right now. I mean, it's got, the extruder's got like 20 parts. And it's not a lot. It's still very simple compared, compared to others. I mean, this is simpler compared, way simpler compared to other printers. Way simpler. So, yeah. Anything else? We're we'll in the shop. Let's do it. So let's do nine, nine sets. Um, ten, back to ten, back to ten. So ten. So therefore, well. So then 10 of those, 20 of the 15 inch, 4 times 10 is 40 of the other ones, 10 of the 6 inch, 20 of the 8 inch, and then 2 times 10 is 20 EMT, so that's cut list for 10. Um, and then 10 of these. I'll weld up the little uh, elongated nut thing. I'm going to take a picture of that again. Cut list of 10 printers.